sounds like something that it's been in my life for as long as I can remember because my dad is uh, he's been into fighting forever. Uh, even my grandparents were doing a bit doing a bit of boxing and stuff like that. So I've like always been around fighting. You know, I, I, I don't I don't really know any different to be honest. I'm a born and bred fighter really. I don't I don't know I don't know any difference. It's always been in my life. You know, it's a family thing for me. It's not just like uh, something that I'm into. My whole family is, is involved with fighting. Do you know what I mean? Like, I absolutely love what I do, so I, I can't, I have no, absolutely no right to complain about. Like like your dad said, if you, if you choose something you love, like you never work a day in your life, and I, quite frankly, I'm doing exactly what I want to do. I originally started off uh, like traditional jiu-jitsu, and then I went to, re I wrestled a little bit, and then I went to Brazilian mm -hmm. jiu-jitsu, so yeah, I'm predominantly a grappler, really. Then I, fell in, I fell, really fell in love with striker when I realized how simple it was in comparison. Touch your gloves and we are on the way and they are not wasting any time going in with some really big shots at French kickboxing style going. Aspinall landing the heavy leg kicks. Benamuda firing back with shots of his own with a Tom would look to take him down to where he probably has an advantage on him. Huge shot! You know, in my eyes, he's one of the best heavyweights in the world. People are going to start seeing it. You know, it's, it's only a matter of time. And as I say, he's on, he's on the right show and he's, he's on the right path. He's got the right people. But, you know, we work hard. Me and him, we work hard. Ah, 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 ah. His boxing's phenomenal. You know, his boxing has to be phenomenal. You can't, you can't do sparring camps with Tyson Fury, the best heavyweight in the world. And, and, and he's shit. We used to go to the Senny event and Dana was featured at one of the Senny events like he was a guest or whatever. I don't remember exactly what he was doing. So I would have been around about 10 years old at the time. And Dana White walked past and I remember saying, and I said, Dana, Dana, I said, Dana I'm going to, I'm just letting you know, I'm going to be in the UFC one day. So a special moment for the UK's Tom Aspinall, who makes his UFC debut. It's also a special moment for his dad as well, who's a massive UFC fan and an early adopter of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in the UK. It's pretty much been the plan since Tom was able to walk. Thank you very much, Red. Round number one, maximum three fives of heavyweight action. There is Tom Aspinall making his UFC debut. It's Jake Collier, he's yeah, making ready. his UFC yeah, heavyweight yeah. debut. Round number one, Aspinall in the red collier, in the blue. Look out for the boxing of Aspinall. He's got pro boxing experience in a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. He moves like a welterweight. What we expect from Collier, what we saw from him at middleweight was with him. Oh, big Solid right hands on the temple there. And controlled power as well, Tom Aspinall, just checking his range and his distance. Good head movement. And only nine fights in his record as well. I, I think the problem for, for a, uh, Tom Aspen a lot of the time was not only finding straight. Oh! What a finish! That's it! Wow! Knockout for Tom Aspen wow. in his debut! Dr. So slick! Beautiful right hand, beautiful right hand, clean. I mean, this is what we've got to expect from Tom Aspinall from his career moving forward. Keep your eyes on this young man. He is something special. Dan is with the winner, Tom Aspinall. Over to you, Dan. Tom Aspinall. Welcome to the UFC, my friend. That was incredibly impressive. I mean, it just, it was flawless. You, you measured him with the right hand and you nailed him with that knee to the midsection. What an experience, you know. This is just, this is just my dream, you know what I mean? One day I'm going to be UFC heavyweight champion of the world, but I always seen it in my mind and there's a couple more heavyweights been fighting on this island and I like the look of uh, Sergei Spivak who fought last week. I thought he was very good. 
and I'd like to uh, challenge myself against Sergei Spivak next. Wonderful stuff and a call out as well. In, he gets a win on the board, gets a call out as well. He's been learning from uh, someone pretty decent in Darren Till, I guess. So I think the more experience I get in the octagon, the more experience I get on the big stage. You really are going to see like a new breed of, of heavyweight fighter, I think. Alan, the Black Samurai Bado versus Tom Aspinall. The fight clock is brought to you by the US Army. Aspinall wearing a red, Bado in the black. Interestingly, the arc on his record. But it's, oh, it's getting creative. But Aspinall charging forward. I will say one thing about the MMA factory. There's a lot of big guys on a small map. They yeah, flash able to get the fight to the ground and look for oh. control. How impressive does he look here that as well? Oh, he's got a Brazilian he Jiu-Jitsu fight for him. psychology their approach to the game is that whoa hold on a minute I used oh. people falling over when I hit them what is happening there it is on the back it's over what's it going right under the chin tap quickly for Arlovsky Tom Aspinall submission victory in round two once he started to end it it was over quickly I mean that's a great way to mix things up I don't think Andre was expecting that there's also a definite humility there he's had a lot of quick finishes he said Michael this man is very aware of self and, and there's a definite humbleness to him as well. Is, is it, uh, Aspinall's got some fast hands, oh, man. Fast. He picked up Genji. He was going, wow, that inspired him. I thought he was going to say smart. But he said, but he was teaching Jiu-Jitsu privates back then when he was just a kid. Very fast hands. For you to have that victory on uh, on Saturday and 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 for your winning ways to continue to remain undefeated, but then unfortunately in the main event, your good friend and teammate Darren Till, you know, has a tough night. Was it hard to celebrate? Was it hard to be happy? Because I'm sure you were bummed for him as well. But you also got the 50 G's. You were on top of the. How do you mix, you know, like the emotions of you're thrilled, but your your friend is feeling down. I'm I'm, I'm assuming as well. Yeah, it, that's kind of tough, to be honest. Yeah. That is kind of tough. That's happened before as well. Um, it's, a, it's a tough thing because you want to celebrate, but you also don't want to celebrate so much that it's kind of rubbing it in somebody else's face, especially like a good friend. He always talks you up. He's, he's had your back. What's your relationship like with him? Me and Till? Yeah. Uh, I think he likes me. I, I don't like him that much, to be <laughs> honest. So... No, we're friends. We're good friends. I've known me and Till have known each other for a long time. In recent years, I think we've be become a lot better friends. Me and Till are completely different personalities. You know what I mean? But yeah. uh, <laughs> I don't know a lot of we, people like Darren Till. If I'm being honest, yeah, he's odd guy. Odd yeah. guy. Yeah. No, to be honest, he's very he's very misunderstood. Darren Till, I feel amongst the people, he, he's a lovely guy. To be to be completely honest, I know. Obviously, I'm saying bad stuff about him, but I am only joking. Yes. He is actually a really, he's a really nice person deep down. You know, forgetting, forgetting all the stuff and the way that he acts sometimes for the cameras and stuff. Deep down, he's, he's a good guy.
Hey, Tyson Fury here. I just want to wish my buddy Tom Aspinall all the best in his upcoming UFC heavyweight fight. Uh, good luck, Tom. Do the business. Smash his face in. Get up there, my boy. All the way to the fucking bank, man. Do it. Representing Moscow, Russia, here it is. Dana, it has been a long three years, but the UFC is back in London, and I can tell you the energy this week has been absolutely buzzing. Now that you're here, how has the uh, reception been compared to your expectations? Yeah, no, I mean, I'm, I'm excited for tomorrow. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a different level here. You know, the fans here are, are, are so fun. The energy, chance, you know, and, and, and going into tomorrow's card, the best UK talent we've ever had in the history of the company. So I have very high expectations for tomorrow night. Well, in the main event, we've got some heavyweights, a rising star in Tom Aspinall taking a, on a dyed-in-the-wool veteran in Alexander Volkov. Fight's a big deal, and it's very important for the heavyweight division. Top five certainly is one thing, but do you feel like, given his skill set, I mean, is he well on his way to getting a, a, a title shot in the, in the near future if he gets past Volkov? Well, you break into the top five, you're in the discussion. Yeah. Then, uh, you know, he'll have a couple guys to beat on his way. So he'll probably be a year away from a title shot. But you never know what could happen either. Guys get hurt. Francis just had knee surgery. Absolutely. You know, and the list goes on and on of, of stuff that happens. So who knows? Do you know what, mate? When you get given these opportunities, they don't come around every day. And what am I going to do? Say no to fighting like headlining a main event in my own country against a guy that I've been watching for like 10 years. Like, I ain't going to say no to that. So. We're ready for it. It's all come at a good time, I think, and I'm looking forward to it. I'm aware that of what a big challenge I've got in front of me on the 19th. Do you know what I mean? I'm not really thinking... It's a boring answer, isn't it? Everybody says it. I ain't thinking past my opponent, but I'm aware, like, how good this guy is and how big of an event this is. So, at the moment, like, my goal is just that. I ain't thinking about anything else, and I'm sure that he's not going to fall over quick. Do you know what I mean? He's had a million fights, so... It's going to be it's going to be a bit longer this one I would say. <laughs> Alexander Volkov beats a former champion right here in this building. 
If you're looking to emulate that performance tonight, this fight clock is brought to you by Modelo. That's a bit of fast talker though. Let's just do that. And there it is! One, two, three. And two. Mixing his arms early. Can't already all but up on the side of the head there. All gone. Dropping those elbows. Big pressure. Early from Aspinall. Aspinall giving him a show at the moment. Huge punches here from the Manchester man. One mistake, this fight's over. Come back, Dalla. We let it go. Into the midsection. There's the elbows. Nice job by Volkov, though. Back to his face. Oh, oh. J'aime bien les deux gars, mais quel combat, c'était magnifique. Some buzz, let me tell you. 20,000 screaming fans. The UK are back. Feeling fresh, bro. Give me a little rest. I'll go again. Well, Next time he comes to the well, UK. Well, right, Next time he comes to the UK, I'll be ready. Good job, big guy. It was picture perfect, honestly. I want to go into like strategy about it. His coach, his coaches, Colin, obviously, the head coach, his dad, Andy, who's trained him since he was a kid. You know, I've been a part of the team and Terry in the corner, like all of the lads back there. It was picture perfect. He didn't put a foot wrong. He paced himself. He knew it was a five round fight. Honestly, I'm just, I'm just astonished that the next, I'm, we're looking at the next champion in the heavyweight division. Even Cyril Gann, I've got so much respect for the guy. Even he sat there and he didn't know what, what it did to him. Andy Josh and Eddie Emma there, they, they were all looking at this guy can box and fight. He can be a champion in boxing and MMA, honestly. Like, I don't even know what to say. You got performance of the night. Whoa, I did! Ah. Yes! Did I really? I have swimming lessons when no, you yeah, I did, yeah, but I'm just did. not very good. Just never really uh never really been into swimming that much. It's uncomfortable. Ah. <coughs> yeah. No, it's cold but it's not it's not as bad as my ice bath. My ice bath. Oh uh, whoa, whoa. Be nice living here, wouldn't it, Indy? Yeah. I was going to say it'd be nice in the summer, but it is. <laughs> it's summer. <laughs> uh, well, I'm not, I'm not a shit talker, am I? I'm not a shit talker. I'm, do, you, do you think you need to be a shit talker? I don't talker? know. I don't. See, when I see people talking shit, and you can see straight through it if it's fake, in my opinion. And I, I, 
I, I, it's just not me and uh, I understand that that's how you make money and mate I'm trying to make as money, much money as possible yeah. but I'm also not trying to sell out yeah. there's some things that's uh, there's some things in this life that's more important than money and uh, being yourself for me is very very important mate I want to I want to make as much money out of this game as I possibly can but it's also very important to me to be myself as well like I want to be real I don't want to be faking someone that I'm not it's just not it's just not me I, I'm trying to be like one of the best fighters that's ever walked the face of the earth like ser I'm seriously trying to do that I'm looking for perfection I'm not looking for well, I've said this and it's gone viral I'm looking for to be like to walk in a room and be like fucking hell that is like one of the baddest men in the world not to walk in a room and be like oh he's got a million followers on TikTok like I'm not interested in that I would rather be like a bad man who knocks people out as opposed to someone who's rich and famous like if rich and f if, if fame and, and riches comes with it sweet but I would rather be uh, like a like a sick guy in, in the cage as opposed to be like a uh, Instagram famous or whatever. Yeah. Baddest man on the planet. No, that's really, the one. That's the one. The one and only Big Tom Aspinall. Hey, there he is. Tommy, how are you? Wait. Before you answer that, Frank? Tommy Aspinall. Tommy Aspinall. Da -da -da. This is your new theme song. You're big time. I mean, uh, you're Mr. Main Event, you're Mr. O2, you're Mr. London. Back again, did it in March, came back to you in July, and this is what you wanted, right? You said it on the program the last time we spoke. You don't want no big Las Vegas fight. You don't want no title fight. You want it to be back in England. Were you happy when you were offered this whole scenario? Of course, of course. I mean... It's not that I didn't want another fight, do you know what I mean, or somewhere else, but if they're coming back to the UK, obviously I'm not going to miss that opportunity, do you know what I mean? Like, this is... Mate, that night in March, that was... Wait, was it March? Yeah, the night yeah. in March, that was something special. That was something special. And if we have the opportunity of doing anything even close to that again, like, I want to be a part of it, why would I not? Do you know what I mean? Why would I not want to be a part of something like that? So I ain't going to pass that opportunity up. So we got it again. We're going again. July 23rd, Aspinall versus Blades in the Big Smoke, in the Ulta Arena, London, England. What more could you want? I realise people say, oh, you shouldn't fight with an injury and stuff like that. This injury that I had with my knee has been going on since way before I was in the UFC. As a, as a high-level athlete in any sport, not just in, in MMA, in any sport, we compete with injuries. Like, that's part of professional sports at a high level. To say that I didn't have any knee problems, I would be lying. Um, I've managed plenty times before with, with the knee. Um, and, you know, one day I knew that it's going to... It's going to go for real, and it just so happened that it was in front of 20,000 home fans and millions watching around the world, so not the ideal situation. All scheduled for five five-minute rounds of action. Aspinall is wearing red, Blades is wearing black. This fight clock is brought to you by Modelo. Tom said he's going to push the action. He's going to be right hands. Whoa! His knee's gone. Oh, such a shame. What a tragedy that is. Oh, no. Oh, oh that's just awful. I'm sorry you had to come all the way here for that shit. And, uh, nah, nah. He's, he's, he's spending eight days here, so he's going to have a bit of a holiday. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's gonna, uh, sorry. When we were going to draw, we were going to hang out. I was going to hang out. Yeah. I wish I could, can I get you a, a drink? Are you allowed I've got a drink. I've got a drink. 
time when I obviously blew the knee out and I had surgery and all that it was the most depressing time of my life by far but I think now it's really like it's really one of the best things that's ever happened to me seriously because I've changed so much since then like I feel like it's made me way mentally stronger I feel like I'm a little bit like battle tested now and I'm free of injury which is great like this this knee injury has been keeping me back for a long time like since before I was in the UFC and uh, it's all fixed, like I had the best surgeon, the best physio, the best rehab, I've had the best diet, I've been looking after my body good, I've been doing hypnotherapy, I've been living clean, I've been sleeping right, like every every box is ticked that I could possibly tick, I'll give myself the best chance of going in and winning this, this thing and making a, you know, changing the future for myself and, and my family and that's that's what the mission is right now. Watching around the world, this is the moment you've all been waiting for! Live from the O2 Arena in London, England! It Here we go, folks. Main event time from London's O2 Arena. The return of Tom Aspinall against that man on a hot streak, Marcin Tabora. Get to the top. Going to take on some big challenges. This fight clock is brought to you by New Amsterdam Vodka. One thing we know about Tom Aspinall, he's very quick for a heavyweight. Ooh. And he gets quick finishes. He almost got one there. The first kick that he threw. Marcin Tabora is a very, very tough out. Oh, look at the hands. Look, look, look at the speed. So he got feet. Oh, that was a kick. punishing front kick. Ooh, the double leg is right there. Oh, nice help. Tonight, we have Tom Aspinall. He said he wants 
the winner of this fight? Is that a fight that you would like? C'est pas pour ça que moi je fais mon avis. Moi aujourd'hui je vais aller de l'avant. J'ai échoué à la ceinture. Je veux retourner à la ceinture. J'ai prouvé ce soir que j'étais prêt pour la ceinture. Malheureusement, mais aujourd'hui on l'a fait. The secret is stay in the gym. Believe in yourself. And uh, that's it. Not, nothing, nothing spectacular, you know what I mean? Pretty basic, but have the dedication now, I guess.